all right guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be doing something a little bit different in terms of what we're doing today we're going to be turning our old macbook or newer macbook or i guess mac device in general into a storage server um time and time again i'm having to go over between windows and mac and the airdrop feature isn't always available to me as well as it is kind of annoying having to go from one device um you know having to log on and sometimes transfer to an SSD, take the SSD and transfer it that way, um, or just have to go over there and airdrop it. Uh, yeah, so that's what I wanna, I wanna tackle that and get that out of the way so that I can reuse this and um, actually make, I guess, use of a device that might just be laying around. So let's go ahead and get into that and um, let's go ahead and get started with how we can set up our Mac device to be our storage server. All right, so right now I'm on my MacBook Pro. Um, I've set this up on my MacBook Air, but I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did. Um, so in the system settings, that's what you want to open up first. And we want to go ahead and search for file sharing. And right here on the left-hand side, you want to under sharing, you want to hit file sharing, and you're going to see it as your first option. If you don't, just look for the um, option for file sharing. Next, we want to make sure that we turn this on and hit the eye icon. Now, by default, you're gonna notice that the allow full disk access for all users is enabled. You can go ahead and disable this if you want, um, but I'm the only person that's going to be accessing my device. And there's some times where I might put store, or I guess put media on it, and I might not put it in a certain folder that I shared. So I want to make sure that I um, have the, I guess, the whole device accessible to, to me, right? But if you only want a certain folder, what we can do is hit this plus icon. And right here, if we go to our downloads, I have this shared folder I created with nothing in it. Go ahead and create that um, if you know wherever you want or whatever folder you want to be shared. Then uh, we just simply click it and hit open. Now that, that folder is gonna be accessible. Now for the fun part, right? So I wanna be able to add storage to this down the road because right now it's only got 256 gigabytes of storage on it, I can simply plug in a dock and plug in an SSD. So what we can do is hit this plus sign and I can now select this entire SSD and give it access to where I can just simply store on there and retrieve the data from that device. And then obviously I can connect more in the future. I'll simply just hit that, hit open, and now we have access to that entire SSD. So it, it's an easy way to expand your um, like a storage device that way you don't have to invest into a NAS at the moment. Now, one more thing, or I guess one other thing you're gonna need in here is the um, user. Make sure you have read and write, and this is the user that you sign into on that MacBook um, with, um, I guess, like a username and password when you first set up the device. If you don't see this here, we can remove this and hit the plus sign. Now you want to make sure that you see your user and just hit select and it adds it. So now that that's good, we want to go ahead and head over to options. Now you're going to see, we want to make sure the share files and folders using SS, SMB is enabled because this is the protocol that um, Windows uses to communicate back and forth. And this is just, you know, making sure that we can do that, especially if you're on a Windows device. If not, then don't worry about it. You don't need it. But we want to make sure we have our um, profiles here that we created because I, I guess because I added and deleted one right now, it's going to have both. But simply just type in your password um, for your current user or the one you're using. I'm just going to go ahead and enable both of them. But you should only see one here. Um, more than likely you should. Um, but yeah, so just simply hit that, hit done, and you're good to go. Now, one last piece of information you're going to need is the device's IP for your local host. Um, up here at the top, you may see an actual IP address. Now, the issue is, right, for me, that I guess going through Charter or what is Spectrum now, they don't give me my IP in this section. So an easy way to find that is simply go to our Wi-Fi settings. So let's search for it. And click and make sure your device is connected to the I guess the network that you're going to just leave it and forget it um, and just hit details and under here you're going to see the IP address that we're going to need um, so that way we can connect to it from another device my MacBooks is a little bit different 
Um, so you're going to see me connect to a different IP address, um, but it's still going to be like 192.168. It's just going to be a different endpoint or a different, I guess, port essentially. Um, and that's the that's the only difference you're going to see. But yeah, just write this down. Make sure we have this, and let's go ahead and hop over to um, the Mac portion to show you how we can connect to it. All right, so now we're on the Mac that we want to connect to our other device for. So the first thing we're going to want to do is head over to our network tab. So this, you can see I've already connected to it before. Let me just go ahead and get rid of it just so I can give you all a fresh example. So the first thing you're going to notice is that you should see your other Mac device um, already here. Um, it's not going to have anything on it. So what we want to do is hit the, in the top left, in on the go or on the, um, I guess the toolbar, um, hit the go button and then hit connect to a server and you're going to see here it's already pre-populated my um, IP address because it's the IP that I was just connected to but simply just type in SMB um, colon forward slash forward slash and then do 192.168 or I guess sorry <laughs> type in the IP address of your device um, and just simply hit connect and it's going to connect to it um, I've already um, put in my username and password but if it simply asks for it simply just put it in um you know straightforward from there hit shared or i guess whatever you want to um i've given it access to the entire drive so it's essentially you can just click whatever um, but for this instance since i showed you the shared folder let's just go ahead and hit shared hit ok and now you can see i am connected to my macbook air so i can simply go to old footage that if i need access to it um, or just simply take this profile picture, say I want to use it for my current uh, Premiere project, drag it to my downloads, and it is here. Um, as you see, 938, it is 938, and you're good to go on that. So, um, I'm going to get rid of this because I already have it. Um, but yeah, so let's hop over to our Windows portion, so that way we can connect to it from our Windows device. All right, so now we're on our Windows machine, and what we need to do is go to Network, and you're going to notice that we don't see anything like we did on our Mac. Um, I'll simply just go to your address bar, and right here you're going to see that I've connected to it before, but it's the same IP address, but just do backslash, backslash. we don't need the SMB colon part. Um, just do backslash, backslash, followed by the IP, so I'm just going to simply click on it, because I've done it before, and see, it's going to ask me for my username and password, so simply type in what we set in the settings, and then obviously, like I said, the password that you use to log in to the device. And just hit remember my credentials and click OK. And boom, same thing that we had on our Mac. We have access to everything. Simply go to our shared. You're going to notice that this is literally the same profile picture. Um, and I can just drag and drop. And there you go, complete. And we're good to go. 9.39 a.m. And yeah, so that is the cool part about having a... Um, a MacBook or an extra Mac device, even if it's like an older uh, generation, as long as you um, set it up like what I just showed you, uh, you should be good to go. You don't have to invest in a NAS or sorry, a NAS, um, and you can continue to add storage until you actually need to invest more money into something like that. But yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this simple tutorial. Um, hopefully I broke it down for you guys. If you enjoyed it, hit, make sure to hit that like button. Comment anything um, down below. Or if you simply have questions or you're stuck on a certain portion, please feel free to drop your questions and I will make sure I get to them. And with that being said, I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one. See you.